I've been waiting almost nine months to show you this. It's my 1961 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. I bought this for an episode of Roadkill out of Central California. Found it in an airplane hangar. Uh, it hadn't moved in, I think, nine years. It's got about 48,000 original miles on it. Um, and although it's, it's weathered, it is in really good shape. And this is the car that over the years I've told you guys about, that I wanted to go eight and maybe 200 miles an hour in a standing mile event in a Cadillac because it just seems wrong to do it, but I wanted to. And part of that plan has always been to have a set of beadlock race wheels for this car that look like the stock hubcaps. They're finally here. <sighs> Let's mount my first set of beadlocks. <laughs> genuinely crushed right now these are not gonna work uh, I'll tell you why I'll explain it um, the first thing to know about the wheels is they're kind of built like a show car wheel would be built the valve stem hole is on the back side of the wheel um, which you know when you're at a drag strip especially in a car this low you don't want to lay on the ground, try to crawl into the car and check the air pressure for your drag slicks before you run in the staging lanes. It's, it's not practical. Um, that's not the end of the world. We could have stuck a plug in there and then drilled another hole on this side and put the valve stem on, valve stem on the front where it needed to be. But the big hiccup here is I can't get the tires on. I, ax I struggled with pry bars and with a double beadlock wheel, you shouldn't struggle at all. This should fall in basically. You know, a couple of tire spoons, you should have a racing slick on these. Um, that's part of the appeal of the double beadlock is you should be able to mount them yourself. And the reason they won't go on is twofold. The barrel of the wheel, the diameter is so big that you start slipping the tire over one side and the bead sits up against here. You can't get the other side down, A, because the barrel is so big in diameter, but B, this beadlock flange is about 200 thousandths of an inch bigger than it should be. Um, and I know what you're saying, okay, we'll machine the flange down. We could, um, but the reason I found out it was too big is after struggling to put the tire on with tire iron, uh, with, with, after struggling to put the tire on with uh, pry bars, I started texting people. Uh, I text Murder Nova and I was like, dude, I'm struggling here. And, and he's like, are you sure you got the right size wheels? And I'm like, yeah, I do. And then I, I finally called Tommy Kirk at MacFab and MacFab does beadlock conversions all the time. And so he started giving me dimensions to look for. And he was the person that identified that this is too wide, right? Um, you'll never get it through the tire. And I couldn't. The other thing he noticed when I sent him pictures of the wheels is he said, there's so much meat cut out right here where the ring goes, is that he said, this will clamp the tire really well about four times. And on your fifth dismount, all the strength is gone. And then the tire starts slipping. It won't actually hold it together. So having the wheels worked on to have these turned down to a smaller diameter to get the tire on then later doesn't solve the problem of this becoming too weak um, to actually hold the tire after you mount it and dismount it several times. Um, and the thing you should know about that is lots of beadlock rings look like this and are scalloped like that, but they're scalloped about half or a third of the thickness of this. And then there's actually material in between all these little scallops here towards the bottom of the ring. That's what keeps the integrity of the ring. And so then you're saying, well, why not take these and send them and have these cut off and, you know, have the beadlock rings done, done again? Well, they've already been welded once. It's an aluminum wheel. You don't want to keep welding it. Um, 
And so what this has done is, is it's kind of a lemons and a lemonade situation. I was building this car for a specific class at Drag Week that has an 850 ET limit that you can only run a certain size tire, that you can only do certain chassis mods, suspension mods. Now that these wheels won't work, I'm sitting here going, this is a 5,000 pound car. Let's not use a 12 inch wide wheel anymore. Let's just do a 15 inch wide wheel. Let's put big tires on it. Let's do whatever we can to make the car work and worry about the aesthetics later and stop building it for a class. So I'm no longer building this for a specific class. I'm building it for me. I wanna run eights in a Cadillac with my friends and go on road trips and you know wherever it falls in an event like Drag Week or Rocky, Rocky Mountain Race Week, you know, so be it. But uh, I'm bummed. These are not gonna work for me. So we're gonna head to my warehouse, go inside Squares Force One because I have a bunch of big wheels and tires that I pulled out of a barn um, where we got that Firebird from a few months ago and we'll use those for mock-up and then uh, later on we'll order a proper set of wheels uh, that'll be bigger than these. So yeah, bye-bye Cadillac wheels. All right, so we struck out on the wheels we were gonna use, which I'm hugely disappointed by because they were awesome looking. Uh, now we're at the warehouse to go through the contents of Square Force One because I have a bunch of old wheels in here. Um, and yes, if you're wondering, I no longer own this technically. Uh, I traded it to my friend Eric and he is gonna be upgrading Lincoln Hawk with all the things to make it a little more, oh yeah. Dude, that's a steamroller. <laughs> so we have several sets of wheels that we got out of the same barn that uh, we found the Rubber Duck Firebird inside of. And these ones in particular are an old set of Kregers that... Uh, If I remember right, had the initials WJ on them. And for a while I thought maybe these might be Warren Johnson's wheels, but who knows? Who really knows? Know what I see here? Blank canvas, that's what this is. This is about the ride height I think would be good for the car. It can go over speed bumps without scraping. Um, any lower, and I don't think we'll have a chance of fitting a very big tire like this one. <laughs> this right here is a Goodyear Eagle racing slick. It is 33 by 17, 15. It's a monster steamroller of a tire. And uh, I have no idea if we could even make this fit. Um, with it just sitting right here, it looks like it's right under the package tray of the rear deck area. This might be the most trick feature of this whole car. No tool needed, and that is going to be the key to getting whatever tire and wheel we end up with off that car pretty easily at the drag strip. Oh, look, it's even been. I wonder, yeah, that looks factory. It's double right there. It's got a half moon cut in it to get the tire off. This side don't. That side doesn't? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> And I don't think it works. No, no, because we're trying to keep the back seat. And the back seat is right here, which leaves us hardly any room for suspension travel or anything, so. Right, like I, I don't have any plans to change the wheelbase and that wheel is centered on the axle and you're right, it, yeah. it is where the back seat is and we're, we want to keep the comfort of the car. So this car is awesome because I'm 6'1", I can put my back up against this wall, stretch out, and my feet don't touch the other side. It's a monster back seat. And we don't necessarily want to move it forward if we don't have to. So 33, too big. What about this one? This is a 31. This is a, what, a 3114? Yeah, I Yeah, 3114. This is the slick for the Firebird. Okay. So this is probably more reasonable. God, that's still really close yeah. to where the seat is. I mean, 
That's a 31-14. And the other, the other problem we're going to run into here is this is a heavy car. I don't think we get away with a soft sidewall slick tire. We need yeah. a stiff tire, yeah. which I'm, is probably a radial or something. This is out of my league here with the weight. I, this is abnormal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Like This car is going to end up over 5,000 pounds by the time you cage it, twin turbo it, you know. It's going to be heavy. So What was it yesterday? 40? 47 something. 47 and some change. Yeah, we weighed it. Yeah. It's like 47 and change. Yeah, by the time you put a full cage in it, an 850 cage. Yeah. Turbos, you know. Yeah, it's it's going to be heavy. It's over 5,000 pounds. Yeah. So. And I don't know that when Jimmy builds a new chassis, the new chassis might be heavier than the stock flimsy X-frame. So, so we might have to go smaller with these tires, like down to like a 315 drag radial. Yeah. Okay, so a 28 wouldn't be bad. These are Blasphemy's tires. These are 295s. What does this look like? Yeah. You got plenty of room for sure. It's a little bit back. Roll it forward a little bit. Oop, that's a little forward, right about there. And that there is close, but I don't think it's into the rear seat. The other thing, and this is, like you, this is out of my realm of expertise, is when we go to four-link this car and back half it, do the four-link bars end up where the seat is? You know, and the mounts and everything. See, I have I, no idea. Would it be better to ladder bar this car? I, do you gain more... I don't know. I don't know. You have more adjustability with a four link. Okay. Um, but I I don't know. I think at this point, I think what we end up doing is ordering a diameter of tire that we think will clear the seat, not order a rear axle yet, head to Jimmy Bullard's place, pull the body off the car, put a set of mandrel bent frame rails underneath it because it's not going to be a round tube chassis. It's going to be a rectangular tube chassis. And then start looking at suspension designs to see what can we put back here while keeping the back seat of the car. So that's where we'll go next time you see this car on Fit Against Garage. Oh. Wow, almost 4,800 pounds. Damn, that's without a cage. But I, if I remember correctly, the trunk is full of junk, so we're going to empty that out before we scale this and find out how heavy this pig really is. All right, we should, we should take some of this stuff out. Forgot. This car came with golf clubs. And if you know me, you know I suck at golf. I'm good at drinking, though, and driving the golf cart, which is really the important parts of that game. Who you are? Uh, oh, spare tire still in here. We could take that out. Snow chains, because we filmed a roadkill episode with this car, went over a mountain where it was snowing, and uh, had to rock these for a little while. We don't really need those where we're going. So those can come out. And uh, oh, dude, add on tape deck there. Maybe we can make that work again.